Watch this F-14 fly like a real Tomcat in part one. Part two is about making and flying it and similar scale models. It's too complicated for a kit, but I'll share how it's done. I make videos on everything from easy to expert topics. To keep it easy, I'll discuss and illustrate the ideas. I wanted a flying scale model to enter an aesthetic design for the second great international paper airplane contest. Something detailed and realistic with moving parts that flew well. I had made swing wings and flying scale models, but this had to be handled and flown by others with few instructions. It had to be durable. I had drawings and a plastic model, but no computer-aided design. I made this scale drawing to get dimensions for smooth curves and figure out parts to make it durable yet properly balanced. Then I drew parts. Some required projective geometry. A few required a programmable calculator to compute dimensions. Parts were copied onto colored paper and cardstock, cut out, formed, and assembled with glue and tape. I did not have color copying or time for colored paint or trim. The nose was colored with a marker. The skin panels were precisely butt jointed together with glue or tape to help transmit crash loads along the curved stiffened skin. This was backed up by internal structure. The rules allowed only paper, cardstock, tape, and glue. I left tightly rolled paper pivots sticking out to prove they were legal. Ventral fins were left off to make it more durable. I added an all-moving tailplane on a paper axle to trim for different flights. I considered having tailorons that moved independently like the real airplane, other moving parts, and linking the wings with paper gears to move together, but decided anything more was too heavy, delicate, hard to operate, or would take too long. The wings have cardstock scans and spars to withstand people holding it by a wing. Balance was close by design and helped by lots of center lift that did not move, while the weight of the wings moved with the wings lift. Swept wings also move their lift forward more at higher angles of attack and maneuvers. Some cardstock was added inside the nose for final balance during first flights into a soft area before the lower skin was permanently attached. It took 75 hours to design and build the first F-14, which was entered in the contest. This turn was tightened by flying into the wind. This is a negative G snap roll. The airplane hits the air like this until it finishes the snap roll. Then up elevator brings up the nose for the climb and turn. My F-14 wing rocks at low speed and high angles of attack, especially with the wings forward. The real airplane may also have issues, but it has a flight control system. Adding ventral fins and adjusting the airfoils on the wings or over the intakes might reduce it, but I use this instability to fly aggressive top gun maneuvers. My F-14 got some press coverage, which I'm not going to show because I have not obtained permission. Here are the professional aesthetic design winners. I won third place with this one. Here are the non-professional winners. Honorable mention went to these entries. This Boeing monomail had rolling landing gear and a spinning propeller. I would have awarded it a prize. Here's my forward gliding paper auto gyro with blades that spin on paper axles. When I asked about my F-14, one of the Seattle Museum of Flight staff said the judges thought it looked too much like it was professionally done. Huh? I thought that was the idea. Oh well. I made two exact copies of the one I entered one to display and one to fly, which took about 35 hours each. 30 years later, it's easily been flown over a thousand times. I've rebuilt the nose, replaced a few canopy parts, touched up the intakes, and replaced the rear axle when it loosened up. 
This is what the nose looks like after a few hundred impacts. Concrete did most of the damage. Curved butt joint skins with reinforcement can make a nice strong scale model. However, great precision is required to cut and assemble them, so it's not a good kit design. It's easier to overlap skin layers, but that's harder to curve, so people often cut the edge into tabs that can cause flat spots. Small tabs help, but then it gets harder to shape it. Joining skids at a bulkhead helps, but you may not want the extra weight. Flat surfaces avoid these problems and make kits easy to build, but can look boxy. Computer-aided design can be used to make more complex polyhedral shapes that approximate real curvature and can be rendered into flat patterns and printed out in color for assembly. If the structure is right, Lighter paper can be used instead of cardstock to get a slow, graceful glide, which reduces crash loads, and goes well with a fixed elevator that is not designed to adjust for aggressive maneuvers. Master Paper Aircrafts has refined this kit making technique to produce a beautiful slope gliding F-14 with linked swing wings. Linked wings maintain symmetry as wings are set at any angle, so you don't need locks leaving wings free to be pushed back to avoid damage if they hit something. And all moving tailplane or tailorons are much better for aggressive flying, if the airplane is durable enough. I have a newer way to make realistic high-performance flying scale models. I also decided to move on to other kinds of aircraft, because scale models can be very time-consuming. I have several ways to make swing wings and moving parts that I will discuss in future videos. I'm James Onker, a non-traditional designer and Guinness record setter in paper aviation. To see more, see the comments and links below this video.